On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, we update you on the fire on board Kodiak Enterprise in Tacoma, Washington. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So we did a video yesterday that detailed the outbreak of the fire on board Kodiak Enterprise, how they were responding to the fire on board, and then several scenarios that may be happening. And you can catch that video up here. You can go ahead and link over to it, and it'll give you all that detail. What I want to give you today is the update. As we have seen, uh, there's been several press conferences done, including by a battalion chief from Tacoma Fire, more instance, more uh, press releases from the Unified Command Authority, and we're just learning more and more about the fire. So we're going to go ahead and jump into that. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's jump into this story. So here's the story from Mike Schuller over at GCAP, and I'll have the link down below so that you can go ahead and take a look at it. Obviously, looking at that image, you see the problem with Kodiak Enterprise. She has been fairly well gutted forward of the house by fire. She is taking a pronounced port list at this time. There were three personnel on board Saturday morning when the fire broke out. They were able to get off the ship. During the initial firefighting, four firefighters were injured. There was a broken ankle, there were several uh, issues with heat and carbon monoxide, uh, and the decision was eventually made to pull back from the fire and just initiate what's basically called the surround and drown. Don't go on board the vessel because of issues with the 19,000 pounds of Freon on board. Freon by itself, not a hazardous material, but if it heats up, could become phosgene gas, a potentially deadly chemical. Uh, but also, because of the amount of water being sprayed on the vessel, you're having a list develop. You don't want to be on a vessel that could potentially capsize. And so the situation was made to pull back. So I want to give you the latest information we have on it. This is Kodiak Enterprise, not in the best of days. This is the ma uh, marine traffic report on Kodiak Enterprise. Just some quick details on it. It's an old vessel, 46 years old, built in Bollinger out on the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, she has been in Seattle now for two months and nine days. So a lot of issues about vessels being laid up uh, if you follow the deadliest catch. One of the things that is happening is that the crab season has basically been canceled this, this year because of low crab inventories. That doesn't mean all fishing has stopped, and this vessel will do a variety of different fishes, fishing and processing. It has been laid up in Seattle for two months, nine days, according to marine traffic. And again, one of the things that you see is this vessel, uh, you can see the lines of it. Again, one of the things we talked about is this is a processing vessel. So on the back deck here, this area right here is where they can pull up nets and trawls and unload cargo right here. But down below here, in this area up forward actually, is where you have that huge processing area where they can process the fish with 100 people right on board. Uh, engines would be back aft here. Uh, you can see water being discharged right here. So you'll have engines uh, probably back aft here, props down here, obviously. And up forward here, this is the house, crew and, and sleeping quarters on board. And then again, that whole processing area cranes on board. So this is the vessel obviously in uh, better days. Uh, here is a latest picture of her at the berth. Uh, you can see they have set up water monitors to cool the hull. According to the battalion chief at Tacoma, they were using thermal sensors to register heat on the vessel, and they were still picking up large pockets of heat on board. Some areas, the hull was about 700 degrees. And so they are using their water monitors to cool it off. You can see how this vessel has been scorched and burnt out and if you go back and look at the pictures from yesterday and we'll show you some pictures from tacoma fire you can see how the fire has progressed uh, across this vessel here's the latest from the unified command set up by the u.s coast guard this is as of yesterday uh, this unified command consists of Tacoma Fire Department, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard, the Washington Department of Ecology, and other agencies that's continuing its response on Monday to a fire board, Kodiak Enterprise, down the Hylobos Waterway, which has now been reopened, by the way. It was closed during the peak of the fire, but it has been reopened. Uh, firefighting has resulted in a substantial reduction in the vessel and improved smoke conditions. The T Tacoma Fire Department lifted the temporary shelter-in-place order at 6.40 a.m. Monday due to improved smoke conditions. 
Uh, responders from Tacoma Fire are cooling the vessel by continually applying water to the vessel's hull. Dewarding operations continue overnight. So they brought in a salvage company to start getting into the vessel. Because the vessel is cold, it's dead, the engines aren't going, you can't turn the pumps on. So they have to put dewatering uh, uh, devices into the vessel and pump the water off. For every gallon you spray on a vessel, you got to get a gallon off. you got to get that water off. And one of the reasons that they probably pull back from that attack is because of the stability of the vessel shifting. Uh, they also noted that dive operations have commenced to inspect the hull. They're saying that they haven't found any appreciable leaks from the vessel. They had the vessel surrounded with three containment booms. So they have multiple layers of containment around the vessel to prevent anything that does leak expanding out, including having skimmers on, on location to skim up whatever is in the water surface. Let's go over to a couple of these images I want to show you that were taken by Tacoma Fire. So this is the picture that was the cover of the uh, image we saw there from the Mike Schuller story. And you can just see the, the pronounced list of the vessel to the port side there. You can see water monitors, uh, unmanned monitors set up so that you don't have to put the crew in the smoke cloud and wearing protective gear, cooling that forward hull of the vessel. And there's a big question about where this fire started. There was actually a fire on board a similar vessel two years ago we'll talk about here at the end of the story that may give us some insight to what happened on board Kodiak Enterprise. Uh, here you can see the crew set up. This is firing a deck gun from one of the uh, engines on scene. Uh, it's back further so that the firefighters were not in the smoke cloud. And here you just see that, that list being done. You see these blitz nozzles on the ground here. These are fixed smaller nozzles, spray about 500 gallons of water. The big monitors spray about 1,000 gallons of water on the fire. So here's the image. This is from Tacoma Fire. They have it on their Facebook page and on their Instagram. And you'll see them spraying fire. I just want to hold that image right there real quick. Uh, that amount of fire that is coming out uh, at that moment, that's a lot of fire. Someone asked me, uh, how can a steel ship burn? It's not the steel that's burning, it's everything else. It is the paint, it's the furniture, it's the, it's the tile, it's the miles of cable that are up there it's the insulation you name it just think about your house for a moment if you lived in a concrete blocked house concrete blocks won't burn but everything inside will and it, that's the contents also notice this hose coming up there uh that's gonna be a bit of a scorched uh, hose at that moment uh you can see the smoke coming in this is actually from that aerial that was way above and here you just see that fire venting through uh so you get a good image of what this fire looks like throughout from both shore and afloat from the Tacoma fireboats. You can see the boom wrapped around the vessel. This is a second video that was posted by them. And again, I'll have the links to all these in the show notes for you, but you can see the, the level of fire. This is when that fire began to break through. And again, there was a conscious decision by the Tacoma fire that at a point they were getting people hurt. Uh, there, everybody was safe off the ship. The fire, they didn't know where the fire started. It was building deep below into this vessel. Again, 270-something foot vessel. And a decision was made to pull back off the fire and just to basically go into a defensive stance, no longer be an offensive attack. In other words, get down in the fire and go for the base of it, but to go defensive and fight that fire because in their opinion, the, the vessel was already pretty well gone and there wasn't any reason to risk any more in fighting this fire. So I wanna take a moment and note the fire departments that were here and I apologize if I miss anyone, but I've been pulling this off a whole variety of sources. So Tacoma Fire, East Pierce, West Pierce, uh, let's see, uh, Kirkland, South County, South King and Pierce County we're all responding there. This was, I pulled that off a Instagram account from Tacoma Fire that listed it. I also wanna give my hats off to the Tacoma Fire Buff Battalion. These are volunteers that go out and support firefighters. They were on scene there for almost two days, providing food and relief 
for the firefighters that are on scene. And let me be clear about something. Being a uh, former paid firefighter and a volunteer firefighter for 25 years, you have no idea what that means when you get off a fire and there's something to drink. Uh, I was on a house fire the other night and, and just a Gatorade makes all the difference in the world, let alone some food and some hot coffee, especially in a cool environment. That is the world of difference. And if you have an opportunity to support your local volunteers, firefighters, first responders, you should do it. Uh, great job by the Tacoma Fire Buff Battalion. Uh, hats off and hats off to all the first responders who went out to this call. So this fire is eerily similar to a fire that happened two years ago. This is a story over in G Captain. Hot work failure leads to fire on Aleutian Falcon, NTSB determines. This is the Aleutian Falcon. This is a boat operated by the same company, by Trident. And here's a story from G Captain back in 2022. Inadequate planning for hot work led to a fire aboard a commercial fish processor while docked at a shipyard in Tacoma, Washington. The fire was reported on the commercial fish processor Lucian Falcon on February 17, 2021, almost two years ago. Exactly. The vessel was docked for repairs at a shipyard in Tacoma. The Tacoma Fire Department responded and extinguished the fire four days later. No one was on board the vessel at the time of the fire. There were no injuries reported. An estimated 20 to 30 gallons of hydraulic oil linked into the water. The vessel was declared a total loss, estimated value of $16.5 million. I'll have the link to the NTSB report here. Sounds eerily, eerily similar in both the situation and the basically outcome of the fire. Uh, literally docked almost at the same exact spot that we see Kodiak Enterprise in. Not, again, sure what those three personnel were doing. Not sure if there was work going on. I, I kind of doubt it because it was a Saturday morning, uh, Easter weekend. I, I don't think repair work would have been going on, but there may have been something else going on. We just don't know where the fire originated. However, the parallel here is an interesting one, and I wanted to bring it up because we're seeing a similar fire by a similar company, Trident Seafoods, with another vessel. So uh, my opinion, uh, a couple of questions I wanted to address that came up in the uh, uh, comments before. There was a question about sinking the ship. Why not just sink the ship? Well, you don't want to sink the ship. Uh, that's a worst case scenario. You really don't want to flood the vessel because then you're releasing all the pollutants out into the water when you sink the vessel. Uh, there is a kind of a, a precedent where if you're worried about the vessel rolling to put the vessel on the bottom, uh, you saw that happen, for example, with the Normandy in New York City back in 1942, where the designer of the vessel asked the Navy commander to go ahead and do that. He refused, and instead the vessel rolled and capsized. I, I think they're being very safe on this vessel, even though she has a list now on the port side, they're dewatering the vessel. They are trying to write the list as they're pumping water in. So as they're spraying water in, they're pumping water out. That's basically what you want to do. Uh, the fire is contained. It's not going to jump anywhere. The vessel is pretty well gutted, uh, at least in the forward house and probably in that area of the processor. Not sure the engines got damaged and areas back aft, but hard to tell. If you go back to one of those pictures, they were spraying water along the entire length of the hull, and that may indicate that the fire has run the entire length of the vessel including into the engine room, in which case it's a constructive total loss. They, there's no repair for a vessel like this, and they will tow her off to probably be scrapped. So that's the latest update we have on the vessel. Uh, if you have any information you want to share, hey, just drop them down a note there in the discussion board. Uh, great discussion over on the last video. Again, you can check out that last video uh, from the link above. Uh, and if you enjoyed today's video, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Well, you can hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a patron of the page. Oh, and also give it a thumbs up if you can. And again, if you want to leave some information uh, at all, feel free. You can email me at mercoglianosal at gmail.com or just respond in the show comments about this. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.